thank you everyone for uh, joining our presentation today. Uh, my name is Deanna Ransom and I am the Global Head of Marketing for Televerde. And today I have the distinct pleasure of introducing you to Jana Lenzenmeyer, the Vice President of Marketing for SAP North America. Jana has a wealth of experience uh, and deep expertise in enterprise and mid-market focused on both direct and channel marketing at companies like AT&T, Microsoft, Nintex, and SAP. She is a three-time winner from CRN's Top Women of the Channel, and if that's not enough, she's brilliant, innovative, and a personal role model to several of the women here at Televerde. Uh, since Yana has joined the SAP team, we've been able to expand and evolve our model in ways that have helped unite sales, marketing, and the channel in lead development by leveraging technology, people, and processes. Before we get started, I'd like to give you just a very brief introduction to Televerde. Televerde is the preferred global revenue creation partner supporting marketing sales and customer success for B2B organizations around the world. Powered by a purpose, but driven mission, a purpose driven mission to transform lives and grow revenue for our customers, we deliver end to end on the full life cycle of revenue generation from marketing through sales to customer success. And our uniquely evolved approach, our business model, best practices, and our integrated solution has enabled us to close $10 billion in revenue for our customers and counting. And that brings me to uh, the partnership that we have been able to build with SAP over the years. You heard me mention that we've closed $10 billion in uh, revenue and right around a billion of that has been with one of our premier customers SAP Who we've been fortunate enough to have been partnered with for the past 10 years We partner with SAP to qualify leads Generate opportunities and support sales across the SAP solution portfolio Yana you came on board about I believe two years ago and maybe you can share um, what were some of the challenges that you identified when you joined uh, the team over at SAP? Yeah, absolutely. Thank you, Deanna. And I have to thank you for such a kind introduction. I, I, I moved by the words. <laughs> thank you. Um, yeah, like, like you said, you know, I joined, uh, I think coming up on two and a half years now. Um, and my charter was to build out the mid-market marketing um, function. And mm -hmm. there was an, a specific, uh, there was a, a big challenge in that, in that historically SAP has been known as, as selling large enterprise solutions, right? So we think of big yeah. ERPs. But over the last several decades, you know, we've made a lot of acquisitions and we now have a huge portfolio of solutions um, that, that are perfect fits for the mid-market segment. And we consider the mid-market segment any company earning under $1 billion in revenue. So as you can imagine, that's most companies that are out there. So the volume uh, was was something that, you know, was was hard to wrap our, our arms around. So I would say, you know, the first the first challenge we we were confronted with is is mm -hmm. shifting from of overcoming old sales and marketing relationships into new ones where we're driving digital, right? So if we think about yeah. historically, when we were really selling and marketing into large enterprise, um, we were working with sales on a lot of high touch in-person experiences. Mm 
And now shifting into the mid-market space, we had to build volume, we had to scale, and we had to go digital first. And so there was a lot of um, education and, and working with sales in, in, in restructuring that relationship and the expectations of what um, they, uh, uh, resetting expectations um, of what they can expect from marketing. So I'd say that was probably the first big challenge we hit. And then the second one is, you know, with all that volume, we really needed to tap into new technologies. Mm -hmm. And we, we needed to be able to test it out and optimize quickly. And we knew we needed to go external to do that um, in order to get access to many of the new technologies that are out there. Wow, uh, Yana, as you were, you know, talking about having to redefine relationships, which mm -hmm. you and I both know, <laughs> That's a mountain to climb in and of itself. Yeah. Um, but then thinking about how quickly things are shifting and going to that digital first approach and, you know, needing to tap into additional technologies, you know, thinking about how you were able to do that um, mm -hmm. by going outside, right? What was the advantage? If, if any, right, um, in, in terms of thinking outside of the box and what did you encounter internally, right, uh, in trying to redefine these relationships? Yeah, yeah, it was, um, it was certainly a challenge and, and there was a bit of um, selling the value, selling the value mm -hmm. of digital first. And um, I think from a sales perspective, and, and I can completely empathize with this, um, you can't see it, right? You can't see the funnel. Um, you know, we can we can pull up a graphic, but I, I don't know who's in the funnel as a salesperson. <laughs> in marketing, this time driving um, a bunch of uh, demand into the funnel, and and I, I haven't been able to shake their hand. I haven't been able to get their business card. So, so from a sales perspective, I understand there's a little bit of trust that needs to be built um, in that, that marketing is doing their job and that funnel really is built. So we did work on um, telling the story and making sure that not only can we show them the data, because we recognize data are just numbers, right? You, you can't shake a tan, take yeah. a tan. <laughs> and then also telling the story behind the data. And and I do think that was a big a big piece to to helping to um, evolve as as a as a sales and marketing partnership. Well, that's huge. I, I would imagine that probably as you think about some of these other opportunities you um, were able to recognize, you know, maybe that helps with an ability to move quickly or what does that do in that regard, moving quickly or anything around, yeah. you know? Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, that that was that was the, the one of the other challenges we were we were facing is that um, in order to earn trust with sales, we had to move quickly. <laughs> They were not going yeah. to be satisfied with, hey, in, in 2022, we should have this figured out. <laughs> so we... No, they we work that well? <laughs> no uh, apparently it's a quarter-driven activity. <laughs> yeah, imagine that. <laughs> so <laughs> so um, we did, we needed to prove value quickly. And we needed to, and that's why it was great to get it isolated with a partner and a partner who has done this for other companies and, and get something into market, uh, learn, right? We knew we weren't right. going to necessarily right. nail it the first time, but learn and optimize and just get better. And then we can take that back to sales and show them like, this is, this is how, this is how we're progressing on it. So it was, it was a, a great, um, a great way to, to build that trust. That is awesome. And then I guess from there, just getting the trust with your direct sales channel is one piece of it. But I would imagine uh, as you think about partners, there's another layer to that, right? Yeah, exactly. And especially in the mid-market space, um, partners are a huge piece to our business and specifically reseller partners. We have a fantastic reseller uh, channel and um, many of them um, provide very niche solutions and provide very specific um, vertical solutions that uh, we rely on. And so we had to think about, you know, how we're developing a model that includes our partners 
And when you include partners, external partners, you introduce new challenges. So within our opportunities here, we have like little sub challenges. <laughs> and yeah, we kind of have nested, nested challenges within our challenges. Um, and I'm sure everyone's familiar with that. Um, but working with partners uh, outside of the company, we're working on different systems, right? Where they're not part mm -hmm. of our system. So we had to think through like, how is that going to work? Work. Um, we needed governance, right? So if we're sending right. leads to them, are they being followed up on? And then do we have the ability to get the feedback from them on the quality, right? So we need that full feedback loop because we need visibility into the success of these activities. And then the third challenge um, with, with extending into the channel was um, just simply uh, partner equity, right? We, we have hundreds of partners and we need to make sure that we are distributing um, leads in an equitable manner. So um, there was a, a whole new set of challenges that came with extending out to our, our uh, awesome partner channel. Wow, uh, I think that's, I think most businesses can relate to that. And you know, the nested challenges, I love how you um, use that <laughs> phrase. So I'm just gonna adopt it. Uh, and, and think more about, you know, other businesses that are probably trying to solve for some of the same things that you just spoke to. So what I'd like to see, what I could ask you is if you could, you know, maybe talk us through the evolution of uh, the innovations that you implemented, you implemented and maybe share a little bit about what the results have been. Absolutely. Yeah. So, um, you know, the, the complexity we were facing was a, a little daunting, I got to admit, because in the mid-market space, we have about six to seven portfolios um, of solutions. And within each portfolio, we have many solutions that we can sell into the mid-market space. And so we needed a solution that would identify the right um, solution for the contact as far as how to nurture them or how to follow up with them, making sure they're getting in the right uh, either nurture track or to the right AE or to the right, you know, telesales. It, there was all sorts of air traffic control going on. And so, yeah. as you know, you slide up here, it was really like a roundabout because we had to be able to not only manage inbound from all of our inbound marketing campaigns. We also had to have the ability to quickly ratchet up outbound when inbound started to decrease. And so we needed that agility to go to, to be able to, to, to flex, you know, when we needed yeah. that outbound um, and then inbound. And then also we needed um, savvy enough resources to be able to handle the whole breadth of the product portfolio, um, be able to navigate those conversations and determine, you know, maybe maybe the reason they they came to us was not exactly the right fit, but maybe there's another solution in our portfolio that actually is a better fit. And so I want to make sure I put them on that path. And so we really needed a savvy uh, a, a savvy team to help us with that. And then um, making sure at the end of the day that those contacts are and those leads are actually getting into the hands of the right AEs or oh partner. <laughs> <laughs> that is that is a lot to yeah capture, qualify, and route in this roundabout, as you have exactly. referred to it as. Um, <laughs> and I and I would imagine, um, as you mentioned, the complexity, right? You have such a diverse portfolio, so many products so many potential industries. Um, and, and I dare ask this question. Is there a, a, another layer deeper that you can share on the complexity that you're solving for? Because you talked about getting it to the HE, getting it to the channel. So I'm wondering if you could provide a bit of a unique lead journey for some level of an industry, right? That kind of takes folks through, okay, but give me a day in the life. So you get this lead for name an industry and then walk me through what that looks like please yeah yeah absolutely and um <laughs> 
it's uh it's fairly complex so i'm going to uh attempt to make this as simple as possible but yet as meaningful <laughs> as possible um yeah so essentially we have um many marketing teams running marketing campaigns um either whether they be specific to a line of business like hr or specific to an industry like consumer packaged goods or even an hr person within consumer package goods right so we'll have a bunch of a bunch of um, campaigns going on out there and then we have a flow of inbound going into this mid-market space um, from those campaigns and we have a centralized team that is then making sure that they're and I, you know I'm, I'm, I'm leaving out the nurture right so we do have mm -hmm. nurtures in place we don't just route directly into, into a telemodel. So we, we have nurtures in place, we have lead scoring in place, but the, the idea is that we're, we're filling inbound, we're having um, the right team be able to catch it all. They catch all of these campaigns are going into this one team and they're able to actually, you know, have a, a, a deeper conversation, really qualify that lead, making sure we understand what they need, and then making sure it's getting routed out to the next team. Now, there's a bunch of nuances, which I won't get into because we'll need another half an hour, Deanna, um, but <laughs> there's a bunch of nuances as far as if it looks like this, then it goes to this team. If it looks like that, then it goes to that team. But um, you know, at the end of the day, we really are focused on providing the best possible uh, experience for our customers. And um, part of that is just we have to get it right. It has to be right. You know, you, you, I'm sure you've experienced it as a consumer yourself. There's nothing more frustrating than getting passed around to multiple individuals oh who don't understand what you want. That's huge. And I would imagine there's a people component to that, right? With all of the digital that's in play, yeah. I would imagine yeah. that, you know, uh, having that, that right human touch talent piece is a part of this in, an, in a really important way. And I would imagine the partnership, does that help support that? The partnership with Palo Verde? Absolutely, absolutely. And, and you know, I, I actually completely missed the other half of the equation, which was a team that is able to actually run outbound, because <laughs> I really just talked about in, inbound. So, you know, ideally, you know, we have inbound coming in galore, but we recognize this, it's not always the case. And so we need to run outbound. And so having a team um, and, and having individuals who actually know the right outbound plays to run and who to run them to um, has mm. been huge. Being able to pivot, right? Pivot back and forth has been huge. It's it's uh it's it's really actually when I when I see it and when I talk about it I'm <laughs> I'm I'm moved at at how much has been accomplished. Uh, that is you know to understand like, because you made it sound very simple. So I just want to go back and let you know you did a great job with making it sound simple. There's all this inbound, right? There's all of these different uh there's logic in the middle right there's outbound motions and everything needing to get to the right place the right team at the right time for the right outcome and i think that what would be really beneficial um when you think about that maybe you could share a little bit about what the results have been to date absolutely absolutely and you know deanna one thing that that is not represented on these slides that I want to make sure I call out is um, there's been a unexpected benefit of working with Televerde and that is um, it has uh, the team has served as a talent pool for for SAP and we the the resources at Televerde that the the women that work at Televerde are just have had such a great uh, breadth of experience with SAP that some of our top our top account executives within SAP actually started off at Televerde. So we appreciate oh the kind of talent that you guys have provided us. And I wanted to call that out and thank you for that. Well, thank you for calling it out. I mean, that's huge. And I think it speaks to another, as you said, bonus benefit, right? Because that's got a lower talent acquisition costs, right? Um, bringing in folks that can kind of scale quickly and, and continue to increase the business. So, Absolutely. you know, I'm, I'm really keen. We've got talent as a benefit. What else have you been able to achieve with the program today? Exactly. Like I said, that was an unexpected benefit. That was not, 
<laughs> we didn't, we didn't sit out out. Sit to... <laughs> yeah. So as far as our, our results goes, um, you know, rapid time to value, like I said, working with Televerity, you guys were able to help us. You, you were um, a partner in helping us determine what the solution is, right? So I came with a bunch of problems and <laughs> you guys helped create a bunch of solutions. And it, it, a lot of that, you know, is so great because you guys have done it for other customers, right? You, this wasn't your first time doing it and we were able to, to you know, work together on what would make sense for SAP. So um, it was quick. I think we were um, up and running within, you know, less than three months and uh it was it was uh i was very impressed with how quickly we could move the second one was um incremental value in driving demand to partners um like i mentioned we had a whole set of different uh challenges and extending into the partner ecosystem and um that was another one where you guys were able to offer uh so solutions um in in, in how to address those challenges because we didn't even know where to begin. And um, I remember talking to the team and they said, well, actually we've done something similar before and this is what it looks like. And, and uh, it, was, it was fantastic to be able to have that level of knowledge and expertise there. And then lastly, which is really what we, you know, I, the customer experience is obviously at the forefront of our, of our goal, but um, we were able to actually increase our contribution to mid-market pipeline by 41% year over year. And, you know, the volume is huge. Um, as you know, I'm not allowed to talk about revenue numbers, but anyone can go Google our, <laughs> our earnings. <laughs> I love how you do this. These numbers are, are, are big, right? So when you're talking about 41%, you're talking about huge numbers. And, um, um, and, and, and our partnership with Televerity was a key piece to that. So um, I'm, I'm super thankful for all the work that, that the team has done. Yana, I have to, I just have to say, how awesome is it when she's like, I can't say it, but go Google. So <laughs> <laughs> please go Google. That's a key takeaway. <laughs> as, as we look to wrap this up, you know, I'm wondering outside of going and Googling um, the 41%, what that could potentially be. If, if you don't mind, Yana, you know, with all that you shared here today, if you were going to share with our audience three things that they should walk away from this conversation with, what would it be? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So I would say the first one is um, don't try to take it in house. So when I took on this role and I was really thinking through what needed to be done, um, I I was initially trying to think of how we can handle it in house, and it was um, it was overwhelming and it was daunting. So um, reaching out to Televerity was absolutely the right step for me. Um, second is um, seeking out incremental capabilities. Um, there were especially working in a large company it's it's hard to um adopt new technologies because the tech the tech stack is so robust and it impacts so many people and so it was great to be able to find a partner where we could say hey i heard about these tools are you familiar with them can we try them and and we were able to actually you know have have people with experience in those technologies so that was i highly recommend making sure you find a partner that has experience in those incremental capabilities you're looking for and then also um, three, it's a it's a it's a little uh, less tangible, but equally as important, which is somebody who truly understands marketing and sales, um, because the, the the like the roundabout that you showed earlier, that solution, it was highly integrated with marketing and sales. And we couldn't just come in with a marketing solution. It had to be a sales and marketing solution. And it, we needed a team that actually understood sales priorities as well as marketing priorities. And I, I absolutely feel like we found that with Televerde. Wow, Yana, thank you so much because if you don't mind, I'd love to add one additional takeaway from my side. And that is that you know, what you've heard today, that the majority of the challenges and the solutions that were discussed today are not necessarily unique to SAP, right? Or even just to the enterprise sector. Um, they tend to now just be common business challenges that need to be solved for. So uh, as a partner or an extension, if you will, of our customers, 
our sole focus is to ensure uh, we support the build of a sustainable pathway uh, to revenue so that we're leveraging the best practices, the technology stack, and amazing people that unexpected benefit for companies yes. that are looking for the growth and the interlocked alignment, which is what you just said, Yana, across marketing and sales. That's that revenue creation engine. And so, you know, I would just encourage folks um, as a key takeaway to see yourself in this story and um, be able to look for partners to be able to help you solve your challenges. And with that, Yana, I have to thank you. I mean, what an amazing story. And I'm sure folks have questions and they want to hear probably from you, not me. So I think this is where we go into our question and answer portion. Is that all right? Absolutely. Thank you, Deanna. Brilliant. Let's move on to Q&A.